Hi guys, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I'm going to talk about a type of magnesium supplement called magnesium taurate. I've gotten several requests to talk about this, specifically in the comment section in my more extensive magnesium supplement review video, because I didn't review magnesium taurate in that video. So I thought I would make a video reviewing the most up-to-date literature and clinical evidence on magnesium taurate and whether there are any advantages to this form of magnesium over the other magnesium forms. As I mentioned in my more extensive magnesium supplement review video, there are two major categories of magnesium supplements. The first category is the inorganic form of magnesium supplements in which the magnesium is bound to an inorganic molecule. Inorganic forms of magnesium include magnesium chloride, carbonate, oxide, sulfate. The second category is the organic forms of magnesium in which the magnesium is bound to an organic molecule. These include different amino acids, so magnesium malate, which I'm also going to be doing a video on because I didn't cover that in the other video, magnesium threonate, magnesium glycinate, other forms of organic magnesium include magnesium citrate, and magnesium taurate is also an organic form of magnesium. So between these two categories, the organic forms have a better bioavailability, so they're better absorbed by the body, better absorbed by the cells. So theoretically, because magnesium taurate is an organic form of magnesium, it should have a better bioavailability uh, compared to the inorganic forms. But we're going to talk about that in a little more detail when I review the actual lit scientific literature on magnesium taurate. Before I delve into the meat of the science, let's talk about an important distinction. There are different types of magnesium taurate. There's magnesium taurate, also known as magnesium ditaurate, and then there's magnesium acetyl taurate. Or magnesium acetyl taurinate. These are not the same forms of magnesium. Magnesium acetyl taurate uses what we call the acetyl version of taurine, which supposedly makes it more bioavailable and better able to cross the cell membranes and therefore better able to deliver the magnesium into the cells. Magnesium acetyl taurinate is also thought to cross the blood-brain barrier more easily and more effectively than magnesium taurate. Magnesium taurate or magnesium ditaurate has not been studied with regard to its bioavailability or its ability to increase levels of magnesium in the brain. So it's really important to make this distinction, especially when you're buying a supplement. Now, when I discuss the studies, please pay attention because I'm going to be making the distinction between these two forms of magnesium. Let's talk about the animal research first, and I'm going to talk about magnesium acetyl taurate first. I found several studies which suggest that magnesium acetyl taurate has good bioavailability and seems to be associated with high brain concentrations of magnesium compared to other forms. A rat study performed in 2019 comparing magnesium acetyl taurate to magnesium citrate, malate, oxide, and sulfate found that magnesium malate actually had the highest bioavailability, but magnesium acetyl taurate came in second. However, magnesium acetyl taurate was shown to have the highest concentration in brain tissue compared to all the other forms of magnesium. Magnesium acetyl taurate was also associated with a greater reduction of anxiety levels in the rats compared to all the other forms of magnesium. So considering how important magnesium is to brain function, this is important to keep in mind for someone who is primarily taking magnesium to optimize brain function. Another study showed that magnesium acetyl taurate was found to ameliorate neuronal damage and prevented the deterioration of social behavior in rats with traumatic brain injury. So the other forms of magnesium that they compared in this study was magnesium sulfate and magnesium citrate. Those were not found to do this. So magnesium acetyl taurate may be a promising treatment to prevent neuronal injury and traumatic brain injury. I found another study that showed that magnesium acetyl taurate decreased photosensitivity or sensitivity to light in mice 
with photosensitive migraines or a mouse model of photosensitive migraine. Another study showed that magnesium acetyltarate significantly alleviated seizures in mice who were magnesium deficient. Another rat study that found that supplementing with magnesium acetyltarate improved synaptic transmission in the hippocampus in rats with magnesium deficiencies. So the hippocampus is a very important structure in the brain that allows us to form memories. When the hippocampus is not working right, it can lead to poor memory. The hippocampus is one of the structures in the brain that is a affected in Alzheimer's disease. So the study found that supplementing with magnesium acetyl torate improved the structure and the function of the hippocampus compared to those who did not get magnesium supplementation. There have been other animal studies that have found that magnesium acetyl torate reduces retinal and optic nerve damage related to glaucoma and ischemia. Ischemia is a fancy term for lack of appropriate blood supply. The thought behind why magnesium acetyltorinate reduces this nerve damage is that it suppresses neuroinflammation. So that's all I found on magnesium acetyltorinate with regard to the animal studies. I found just a couple of studies that measured magnesium torate or magnesium ditorate. One study found that in animals, magnesium torate has heart protective and antihypertensive qualities. It was also found to increase glutathione levels in rats, suggesting antioxidant and anti-aging properties. And another study found that it can help prevent the formation of cataracts. So that Keep in mind, that's magnesium torate, that's not magnesium acetyl torate, okay? There seems to be overall more data with magnesium acetyl torinate. Let's move on to the human studies. As we all know, humans are not the same as a rat, we're not the same as a mouse, we're quite different. This is why it's really important to look at the human clinical evidence of anything, any supplement, any treatment, preferably with large randomized clinical trials. Drum roll! The clinical evidence is minimal, unfortunately. I found one small clinical trial of magnesium acetyl torate on 20 women with premenstrual syndrome, which found that treatment with magnesium acetyl torate improved PMS symptoms. I also found a case report that found that supplementing with this type of magnesium improved well being in people with migraines. I didn't find any clinical studies on magnesium torate. Some people might be interested in magnesium acetyl torinate or magnesium torate because of the fact that the magnesium is bound to the amino acid taurine. Taurine is associated with health benefits according to several preliminary studies. So in animal studies, taurine has been found to hold antihypertensive, anticonvulsant, anti-inflammatory, anti-weight gain, and anti-aging properties. One study found that taurine supplementation can extend the lifespan of mice by up to 12%. Animal studies have also shown that animals with taurine deficient diets can develop retinal damage, heart problems, and immune problems. With regard to human studies, I found a couple clinical trials on taurine by itself. One was very small and it was performed on women and it found that supplementation with taurine prevented the decrease in an antioxidant enzyme called superoxide dismutase or SOD. This is associated with aging, so it suggests that taurine may be an effective strategy to slow down the aging process. Another trial found that taurine supplementation reduced insulin levels, inflammation, and oxidative stress in people with type 2 diabetes. And then the last study that I found on taurine specifically, this was fascinating. It discovered that taurine levels in humans increased after strenuous exercise. You don't have to take the taurine, right? You can just eat regular diet, healthy diet, and strenuous exercise will raise those taurine levels. Overall, the literature that I found on taurine itself suggests that it does have health benefits. It's very preliminary evidence minimal human clinical evidence, but most of it is positive. So what are my overall thoughts? With regard to magnesium taurate or magnesium ditorate, this form of magnesium doesn't seem worth taking for a couple of reasons. I only found two animal studies on this form of magnesium. I didn't find any human clinical evidence. I didn't see any bioavailability research on it, so we don't really know how bioavailable it is. When you compare the other forms of magnesium, like magnesium glycinate, 
for instance. It has a lot more evidence, a lot more human clinical evidence to support its high bioavailability, to support that it is entering the cells, it is doing the job that it needs to do to get magnesium into the cells. It just isn't worth trying magnesium taurate, in my opinion. With regard to magnesium acetyl taurate, there's more evidence to suggest that it is bioavailable, at least in animals, and there are definitely benefits to it that seems specific to magnesium acetyl taurate because of the taurine that it's bound to, at least in the animal studies. There's very preliminary human evidence to support that magnesium acetyl taurinate actually does the same thing in humans that it does to animals. If it were up to me, I would probably wait till there is more research on magnesium acetyl taurinate. There's a couple of nutraceutical companies that have pro touted magnesium acetyl taurate as the brain-specific magnesium. I don't think that there's enough evidence to really support that it's better than other forms of magnesium at entering the brain and affecting the brain because, first of all, there's only a few animal studies to show that it does that. Uh, and it's only in animal studies, and it wasn't actually compared to the other brain-specific magnesium forms like magnesium glycinate and magnesium threonate. There's just a lot more data and human clinical data on other forms of magnesium. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be helpful, please make sure to hit the like button, comment, subscribe, and as always, I really appreciate you all. Hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.